Despite being originally released in 2011, Terraria was actually a completely new experience for me in 2019. So if you're a new player wondering what this game is all about, or a seasoned veteran curious about how the Switch handles the game you know and love, then stick around as I attempt to review the absolutely massive game that is Terraria on the Nintendo Switch. And remember, if you enjoy this review or find it useful, please drop me a like below and consider subscribing to the channel. Your presence on Switched On will be most welcome. Okay, just to point out this review isn't from someone that's played 3,000 hours of Terraria and seen everything there is in the game. If you have been watching my beginner's playthrough series, which I'll link to above, then you'll know I'm very much in the early days of the game. But with my playtime approaching 35 hours already, I feel comfortable enough publishing my thoughts in this review, but just bear that in mind. Also, I've not heard of any major issues with the game either once the latter stages are reached. Right then, so what is Terraria? Whenever I got curious and looked up anything on the game over the years, it was always described as a 2D Minecraft. As, at that time, I wasn't particularly interested in playing Minecraft either, it seemed an easy game to be able to pass on. Now I've played Terraria myself, I can see the obvious comparison as both games involve mining materials, crafting items and building to the limits of your imagination. But Terraria is far more action oriented and focused on progressing your world and character within the game. There are definite checkpoints to strive for, with multiple bosses to seek out and conquer, and what basically amounts to a base building metagame with AI characters that can join your world as long as you've built suitable lodgings for them. As in Minecraft, you are nothing without basic materials, so with a starting axe for chopping trees and a pickaxe for mining into the ground, your first task after creating a character and choosing a world size is to start building a shelter as, just like in Minecraft, once the sun goes down, the world fills up with all number of nasty creatures baying for your blood. Due to the 2D viewpoint, building in Terraria is a simpler affair than 3D games like Minecraft or Dragon Quest Builders 2. Creating a basic shelter is a simpler task as laying 6 blocks of wood up, 10 blocks across and then 6 blocks back down. That will give you the most basic protection but you will also need to fill in the structure with wooden walls as well as giving your new abode some light, a door, a table and chair before you can really call it a home. Your buildings and structures will all start this way out of necessity but before too long you will be wanting to create grand structures full of golden furniture, spiralling staircases and trophies and trinkets from discoveries on your adventures. Spend 5 minutes looking on Reddit or YouTube at some of the impressive structures that people have built and your mind begins to boggle. The mechanics of building using a controller on the Switch will take some getting used to, but also once mastered offer a fairly accurate replacement for the PC's mouse and keyboard, which I would imagine is still the best way to play the game. Materials are selected from your hotbar with the left and right bumper and pressing X will bring up your full inventory to shuffle items around. Whilst pressing R2 with an item in your bar selected will either trigger the use of an item, be it swinging your sword or swigging a health potion, and pressing it with a building material selected will place that item into the world. To help accurately place it, you have two options of cursor available by clicking in on the left stick. The standard smart cursor can be aimed with the right stick and is useful for aiming ranged weapons such as bows or guns, and also when digging for example, it will automatically select the next best block for you to mine. When using the secondary building cursor, a small crosshair will be shown in the middle of a grid and this can be moved a block at a time using the D-pad which gives you very fine control over where to place items when building. I would say neither cursor is 100% perfect. The standard cursor can place items where you didn't want and the building cursor can be slow and fiddly to use but generally between the two they get the job done and I'd say overall given the requirement to have to use a controller on the console it's about as good as a system as you're going to get. If you do pick up this game, I would make a point of getting used to switching between these two cursors as soon as possible. There's definitely a learning curve to the control scheme overall and it will take you a few hours to be comfortable, but once mastered the controls work fine and are snappy and responsive. Previous PC players will likely bemoan the lack of hotkeys for certain actions though, and it should be mentioned that touchscreen controls are available for all actions in the game. But to be honest, playing using a touchscreen is not ideal given the Switch's size and weight in your hands compared to say the mobile phone version. It can be useful to use the screen for inventory management though, so bear that in mind. The world that you do all this building in is vast. Even when selecting to start in a small sized world, the horizon stretches out far and wide 
encompassing different biomes of desert, ice and jungle. The depths you can mine down are similarly insane, and the further down you go, the stranger and more dangerous the world becomes. Your starting character isn't particularly fast, and your pickaxe is lumbering to swing, making early exploration slow going. The slimes that inhabit the surface, whilst passive during daylight hours, are still around in enough numbers to be a hindrance to your early work, but killing them is vital to receive the material you will need for crafting torches. Your world also spawns an AI guide to help you. They will be on hand to offer advice and guide you through the actually quite decent tutorial at the beginning, but longer term they provide a useful asset as you can give them a material and they will show you all the crafting recipes that it's used in. It's key then that you build a suitable shelter early on as your guide will move in and make it their home. As the game progresses, more and more NPCs will move into your world. Each NPC has a different trigger point to when they show up, such as having enough money in your bank to tempt in the travelling merchant who sells rare items, and collecting strange and colourful flowers will bring the dye merchant along, who will show up and allow you to recolour items in your world. Each NPC, of which there are around 30 in the game, will need a room to stay in, so you'd best get building and ensure you have a nice cosy room for when they arrive. Once you have safe lodging for you and your guide, the night will come and it's the best time to head underground. Mining is one of the key components of Terraria and where you will find the best minerals for crafting better weapons and armour and also discover the best chests holding rare items. Mining in Terraria reminded me a lot of Steamworld Dig 2, so if you like that game, you should love this. As I mentioned earlier, the starting pickaxe makes digging around the underground a little bit of a slog but the feeling of discovery and not knowing if you're about to break through the mud and discover an abandoned lair full of treasure or stumble across a large patch of precious gold is always exciting. As you gain new items such as a faster pickaxe, grappling hooks, bombs and the like, you'll be burrowing towards the hellish underworlds in no time. Venturing to and from the surface with your discoveries can be a little tiresome, especially the further away from the surface you dig, but as in everything in this game, self-improvement over time will help. Discovering things like the aforementioned grappling hook or even a potion that instantly returns you home will help alleviate any of the trudgery. Combat with a vast array of monsters can sometimes be clumsy, especially early on, you see in a pattern here, where your only line of attack are slow swinging swords. But before long you will amass an impressive arsenal of arrows, guns, lightsabers, swords that shoot projectiles and so on. You will need them, as while most creatures in the world can be dealt with by brute forcing them, at various states during the game, huge bosses will arrive. These usually take the form of super-sized versions of the usual enemies, from giant slimes and flying eyeballs, to literally walls of flesh and all sorts of demons. Defeating these super-hard versions of enemies usually give you some important and rare items that will allow you to advance in your world. This kind of ends the excellent gameplay loop in Terraria, and for me is what elevates it above Minecraft. Here you are mining materials to craft better weapons and armour, to summon huge bosses which give you more powerful items, to be able to mine better materials, to craft better weapons and well, you get the idea. The sense of progression in this game is amazing. The sheer variety and number of items to discover is quite remarkable and totally addictive. You just have no idea what's around the next corner or through the next cave. Yes, it's full of complex systems and you will very likely need a wiki guide or some YouTube playthroughs to help you at times, but honestly, if you are new to this game, try to discover as much as you can yourself as the game is absolutely full of eureka moments that are super satisfying. Graphically, Terraria is full of charm. It's pixel art for sure, but the fact that each of the thousands of items looks so unique is very impressive, and the game also boasts some nice lighting and particle effects which help elevate it above the standard pixel art game. The music is on a repetitive loop, but it's also annoyingly catchy. There are distinctly different tunes for the nighttime and daytime periods, which give you a good indication when you're deep underground of when it's safe to return to the surface. Performance wise, the game ran perfectly for me, as I mentioned at the start, I'm around 35 hours in or so and haven't had any crashes or slowdown personally. I've heard some people have had crashes, although the game has already been patched a few times since launch and that seems to have alleviated those issues. I'm obviously not sure how performance holds up thousands of hours in, but as I say, it's solid for me so far. 
There is also multiplayer available in the game, which at present is limited to your friends list only, and you can have up to 8 other players in your world at any time, so it's probably best you limit that to people you know in case randoms come in and wreck your hard work. Ok, so my verdict on this game, well, I'm honestly kicking myself as to why I overlooked Terraria for so long. It's as much of an action platformer as it is a Minecraft clone, and whilst the 2D viewpoint will put a limit on your building freedom compared to 3D building games, it's still quite amazing the variety of building you can do due to just a wide variety of items available in the game. If I'm being honest, the UI is a little fiddly and getting around your inventory and crafting is a little bit unintuitive and will likely frustrate for many of the early hours of the game. There are definitely improvements to be made here and even just swapping two items around can be an exercise in frustration. Dying is also something that can frustrate, especially when mining as you can get hit out of the darkness by something or find yourself trapped in water or a small cave unable to escape whilst a number of monsters wail away on you. Thankfully, although you will drop half of your money, the only real consequence to dying is returning to your spawn point on the surface. Just remember to bank your coins in a chest at your base as often as you can. I could talk for hours about this game and apologies if it feels like I already have been. It's vast, exciting, frustrating, wondrous and a curiosity to play around with. It's like being given every cool Lego brick you ever wanted as a child and being asked to go build whatever your imagination desires, but also manages to combine that with a really decent action adventure game. Terraria has become my obsession. The controls may not be perfectly suited to the Switch, but the gameplay certainly is. Whether you pick up and play handheld for 5 minutes just mining precious ores, or spend 5 hours on the sofa building a waterside fortress for your growing town on your TV, you will always be working towards something new. The elephant in the room with the Switch version is undoubtedly the launch price, which at £25 is the highest price of any other Terraria release. Now this may be due to the fact that there's a physical version coming later in August which always seems to have an impact on the digital prices of games on the Switch, which is a massive shame really. I can fully understand the furore the price of the Switch version has caused, but having never owned the game myself, I think £25 is a superb price point for a game with so many hours of fun gameplay and I really wouldn't allow it to cloud your judgement. If you have owned it before, consider the lower price you paid a lucky bargain for such a deep and well crafted game. I've probably harshly docked a point for the slightly fiddly controls on the Switch, but I can't recommend this game enough and I'm giving Terraria on the Nintendo Switch a superb 9 out of 10. Ok everyone, thanks for watching the review, I really enjoyed this one and hope you enjoyed watching it. And remember to check out my Terraria playthrough which should give some of you new players some help and I'm also hoping to get a top 10 beginners tips video out pretty soon as well so keep an eye out for that one. But until next time, I will see you on the next video. Cheers guys, bye bye.